Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, so what I want to do right now is demonstrate how to uh, use this particular proximity sensor uh, hooked up to a Teensy or Arduino compatible Teensy on a patent robotics motherboard to be able to control a load of some reasonable uh, intensity. Because uh, if we look at this particular sensor, um, which is this one right here, and we look at the characteristics of that sensor, we see that the load current is actually less than 200 milliamps, um, which is pretty good for a lot of stuff, uh, but it can actually sort of tax the sensor. So it would be nice to be able to shift it uh, to something a little more heavy duty and um, do it nice and clean and, and simple. So what I've done here is I've decided to use an optically isolated relay board to be able to do that. Uh, in this particular case, it's a dual relay relay board. And if you look here, I have the uh, relay board connected to the uh, patent robotics motherboard via this yellow wire is actually going to the voltage pins here on this side of the board. That's the center set of pins. Okay. Keep in mind, I currently have it set at 5 volts. Okay. So the jumper is set at 5 volts. The blue wire here is going to the outer set of pins, which is ground. Okay. And it's clearly labeled on this board here. And then I'm going to use this particular uh, relay, which is input 1. And that orange wire then is currently hooked up to the signal pin. In this case, it's hooked up to signal pin 23. You can see over here, what I've done is I have tapped the this fan. Okay, I've tied the ground into the common bus. I have the positive side of the fan going to the relay. And then here you can see that I have the other uh, the center set of pins here to the relay hooked up to the positive bus which if you recall from the last video is currently hooked up to the center set of pins on this side which is being powered by a 12 volt wall ward. So when this relay clicks on we should in effect send 12 volts to this fan and we'll be able to click it on by sending a 3.3 volt signal to a optically isolated LED which will then switch this relay on and turn on the 12 volt supply. So to do that we have to modify the, the code that we had just ever so slightly and if we go here you can see this is exactly where oops well almost exactly where I left you. Um, actually this has been edited. Um, so look what we've got here. Right underneath the LED Okay, I have created this other variable called fan, which is my fan is going to be connected, and it's connected to pin 23. I now have also set that particular pin 23 to output, so I can turn it on and off digitally. And then moving on down, uh, I'm still going to turn on and off the LED. And at the same time, I'm going to turn the pin high that the fan is connected to, which will light the internal LED in the optical isolator, and then that'll slam the relay down. And it'll also then, when the uh, if it's not greater than 500, it will then put it into a low position. Um, the other thing I've done here is to make it faster. Okay, I've commented out this line here, which was that serial display, so we won't actually have to spend any time you know, waiting for the serial to load. And let's actually take this time. I had it at 500 in the last video. Let's set it at 50 so we'll see some instant action. Okay. So I think that code is relatively clear. Again, I create the variable for the pin. I set that pin to output so I can turn it on and off. And then in response to a signal greater than 500, I set that pin high, turning on the LED on the relay, and then if it's not greater than 500, it sets it low. So I'm going to load this up, and we'll see what happens. All 
Okay. All right. Move this code out of the way. And actually, we got to see something which is really kind of cool and we should be aware of. These relays are pretty hard to pull down. Okay, it's an electromagnet. It sucks a lot of current. And let's see if I can get it to error again. Oh, well, you saw it flash a couple times. Let's see if I can get it into an oscillation. Well, it's working better than I expected at the moment. Well, all right, I can't seem to get it to uh, get stuck in an uh, oscillation where it's clicking on and off. So this particular computer that you're, I'm recording these videos on is actually a rather small computer. I wish I could show it to you, but it's essentially a laptop in a box. And it doesn't have a whole lot of power coming via the USB cable. So what we have here is a situation where you see it oscillating from time to time. There just isn't, I can't quite get it to stay. There just isn't quite enough current to be able to confidently slam down the relay. Um, that may not be the case with, the, with uh, your circumstance. It all depends on how much power your uh, USB is able to deliver. Um, if it is a circumstance, I have actually made these little adapters. Okay. Um, what you can do with this adapter is you can see that there are three jumpers on this adapter. This outer jumper is the one that uh, regulates power. So when I pull this jumper, it's going to isolate power from your computer. There will no longer be a 5-volt supply coming from your computer to the, your device. You still have the data. Okay, these two jumpers are still in place. The data still goes. I can still program. I can do all this stuff. But it no longer has power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this in between my USB cable and my computer. All right. And I'm going to pull. Actually, you can see it's still on. Okay. I'm going to pull the jumper from the power. And now I'm going to go to this board. And I am going to put that jumper here, which bypasses the switch. Okay which now means that this board, all of this board, is being powered from this 12 volt uh, wall wart supply. All right, And the chip itself is now being powered by this 2 amp voltage regulator here, which should give it ample uh, power and uh, plenty of reserve to be able to confidently slam down the relay. So when I do this now, I can't get it to oscillate. Okay, so it has a lot more power. In fact, I think it would be fun to try. I should have tried this before I shoot the video. I'm going to switch this to 3.3 volts. Let's see what happens. I could be editing this video in a second. So now I've actually lowered it all the way down to 3.3 volts, but I still have it backed up by this um, 2 volt supply. And even at 3.3 volts, we have a steady supply of current, and it does just fine. So if you do have an oscillation issue, uh, you can bypass the uh, computer-supplied current and run it directly off your wall ward or battery supply to eliminate that problem. So hopefully that video was useful, and I'll see you again soon.